This is the new reality now, right? Nothing is sacred anymore, including breakfast. According to a recent report by the Environmental Working Group, my breakfast now comes with a dose of Roundup. Yikes. I mean, look at this report. It's written by a PhD. It's got a big chart with numbers on pesticide residues in food, numbers that aren't zero. It's got regular and organic products listed. So, I mean, it can't be biased. I mean, frick, this is... Scary, it's alarming news. I, like most people, would like to assume that the government is in some way ensuring that we aren't getting unsafe amounts of any adulterant in our food. So what is going on here? How did the world's most hated agrochemical find its way into our breakfast and what can we do about it? The first thing to establish is how much glyphosate is actually in my Cheerios because I wanna know how mad I should be about this. We could get into the weeds about this, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna go with the Environmental Working Group's own measurements on this. They tested Cheerios three times for an average glyphosate measurement of 497 parts per billion. Is, is that bad? 497 isn't zero. 497 parts per billion is like a shot glass worth of ink in an Olympic pool. It's 25 minutes in 100 years of time. 497 parts per billion is frankly not that much of anything. That said, 497 parts per billion isn't a measurement to ignore simply because it's a tiny measurement. I mean, the EPA sets safe levels of lead, for example, in water at 15 parts per billion, much lower. So anything higher than that, and there would be too much lead in the water and it would have long-term consequences for those drinking it. Well, lead and glyphosate are not an apples to apples comparison, like at all. They've got different levels of toxicity to humans, and that's kind of the point here. For any contaminant you're finding in anything, Cheerios, it's probably a good idea to set a threshold of safety so you know how much glyphosate is too much glyphosate. Because yes, in a perfect world, there is no glyphosate in cereal and no lead in water. Duh. But in the real world, things end up where we don't want them. So it's a practical exercise to think about how much of anything is too much. So then, how much glyphosate is too much? It depends who you ask. The EPA has measured and tested glyphosate and they've concluded that if you're an adult weighing 154 pounds, you could consume up to 140 milligrams of glyphosate per day and have no short or long-term health effects as a result. But it depends who you ask. The European Food Safety Authority, they've set their levels at 35 milligrams per day. Okay, that's a bit of a swing. California though, they swing even further. They've proposed their own safety limit at 1.1 milligrams of glyphosate per day. California's proposed level is 127 times less than the EPA's. Europe's safe level falls in between those two. And then we have the Environmental Working Group. They've set their threshold at 0.01 milligrams, which is 100 times lower than California's level. To put it another way, the EPA's threshold is the miles between New York and the far side of Australia, and the EWG's limit is just the first mile. So somebody is way off here. What am I supposed to do with that range? Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I know what I did do. Math. Which is not my strong suit, but I had it double checked by an adult, so I think we're good. The EWG said they found 497 parts per billion of glyphosate in Cheerios. 497 parts per billion equals 0.000497 milligrams per gram of Cheerios. 28 grams of Cheerios is a serving, so 0.000497 milligrams times 28 equals 0.01 milligrams, which is precisely the threshold that the EWG set. Hmm. And when I did that math, that's when my skeptical alarm bells started to ring, because setting a standard that is 100 times lower than California standard, that is already 127 times lower than the national standard, seems needlessly arbitrary. Unless you work the problem backwards, just find out how many parts per billion of glyphosate is in something and then claim that exact amount is too much. EWG's tolerant limit was not really determined by experiments or any metric that makes logical, pragmatic sense. By California's already very conservative numbers, 1.1 milligrams, you'd have to eat 79 servings of Cheerios to eat too much glyphosate. By Europe standards, you'd have to eat 2,518 bowls of Cheerios to eat too much glyphosate. And by the US standard, we're talking over 10,072 bowls of Cheerios to eat too much glyphosate. 
But according to EWG, you'd have to eat exactly one bowl of Cheerios to eat too much glyphosate. That's their standard. One bowl, too many. And from that perspective, it starts to feel like we aren't talking about safe levels of glyphosate at all. It looks more like we're creating an arbitrary rule that indirectly says that the only good amount of Cheerios is no Cheerios. Okay, so this is an interesting lens to view this all through. According to the EWG, they are funded by over 20 companies, including Stonyfield, Earthbound Farm, Organic Valley, Nature's Path, and Annie's. Now, even though I look really good in a tinfoil hat, I am not a conspiracy theorist, but if I'm looking at the fact that the EWG is funded by companies that make food products in a really competitive market, I've got some questions about their resulting report. For example, like how did they choose the things that they tested on this list? Noting that Nature's Path is one of their funders, and then noting that Nature's Path appears in the report saying no glyphosate was detected, I have to wonder how they were measuring glyphosate and how many samples they were measuring and all of that, because if one of your stated funders gets a perfect score on your very, very, very hard test, I kind of want to know how that test was scored. The EWG's report on glyphosate residue is scary, for sure. It was designed to alarm you, so if it did, don't feel bad. Just realize that it's an outlier and it takes the idea of precaution to the point of absurdity. If you contextualize the EWG's findings with a variety of other sources of similar information, you can see that they are the anomaly. Math. Math is the thing that the EWG never expected us to do because a little logic goes a long way when we're being intentionally freaked out about our food. In a perfect world, farmers wouldn't have to use late season glyphosate applications to dry oats. In a perfect world, Cheerios would also be made of pure sunshine and rainbows and water would be lead free, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the world isn't perfect. The growing season gets a little rushed, so farmers use glyphosate to help keep them on schedule. Cheerios aren't made of sunshine and rainbows, they're made of oats and sugar, and they have trace amounts of glyphosate in them. And water has trace amounts of lead, and that is just reality. Reality comes with risks, but our day-to-day -day reality with food, it doesn't involve managing a whole lot of risks because regulators like the EPA, even though they leave a lot to be desired, they do do a pretty good job of managing risk for us. This is why they set thresholds well below what is bad for us. Food is incredibly safe these days because we account for things like glyphosate residue and have protocols to manage it. Glyphosate is in cereal. That is a reality. Your cereal has never been safer that is also a reality. And if that feels like a contradiction, well, welcome to the fabulous nuanced world of modern food production. Cheerios are complicated. Thanks for watching.